so you guys see my screen yeah um, so the next one all day in here so we've got usd cad right now, this is one of the, pair, the the weekly swim pairs that i was looking at um now as you can see you've got different zones this one down here doesn't matter because it's too far away this one over here matters um because obviously that's where our target is our, our target is negative 27 using the fib so if our target is above that zone we were looking at it in the sense of okay if price gets to about this area here or just after the zero percent fib what could price do before friday if price gets to the zero on a friday obviously we exit if it gets to this area on a friday obviously we still exit and don't worry about the rest uh, because obviously now this red zone would have been a resistance area, which is where we our target was. So the likelihood of price getting to that area and bouncing off would have been, you know, drastic. Uh, but as you can see, price never did that. And what it did was it actually disrespected all of those, uh, all of the zones that I was looking at. Um, now the previous week we did have a daily ICI set up to the upside. Um, and then it got invalidated because of this area here. So where it was supposed to respect this daily resistance turn support area. Now, we are assuming that it's going to act as support because obviously after an impulse, we wait for the pullback. And that's how the market plays out, right? It's constant ups and downs. And it's never just a straight line. Um, so as you can see, price held the zone until it broke out of it then started acting as a resistance area until it got back down to about this area over here now this is another area which um which is basically the order block now i think it was michael who asked about the order block this area here would have been your order block now if i was to take this off i don't want to take all of it off but give me a sec basically after an impulse you look for you look for where price broke structure and then you also mark out the last buy to sell candle depending on um which direction you're going in so if it's a bullish trend you would look for a sell to buy candle if it's a bearish trend you look for a buy to sell candle so that would have been you would have had your breaker structure from here basically right which is why i've got these fractals because it just tells me the highs and lows so that's your breaker structure there. Now the last sell to uh sell to buy candle, in other words, the last bearish candle before price broke structure, that's the candle you mark out. So that would have been uh this area here. However, because this one here is higher, you could actually act off of, well, you could draw both of them basically, depending on how you want to do it. But the actual way to do it would be the order block, which is this area here, right? That would have been your little order block. But as you can see, if you also drag this across, you can see how this area technically covers some of this as well. So what you could have done is that so that you can get your entry so that you don't miss your entry, right? Um, and then you could have put an entry at the top of that area there and then maybe put your stop loss exactly where the bottom of this wick is. Or that's to be conservative. Or you could have put it exactly underneath uh, the box and then target whatever targets you want to you know hit that's what an order block is so your next target which is remember when i said about um you can use the, the opposite order block to target your, your as your tp you would have done the same thing for over here you know what i need to do this like sorry so you would have targeted that over here basically right so as you can see now with this candle here Remember on the day uh, on the daily time frame last week when I was looking for a daily ICI setup, which it did have it until it got invalidated, switched to the weekly, and the weekly was still forming a, a weekly ICI in the same direction. So daily was bullish until it got invalidated, but then the weekly was also bullish until it got invalidated this week as well, right? Now, although it's invalidated for the ICI, it doesn't mean price is not going to go in that direction. It just means entry-wise for the ICI, for the EMC setups, you can't get an entry. But if you're doing basic supply and demand or, or order blocks or fair value gap, depending on what sort of um, you know setups you're using, you can still trade this way, but you, your entries will be different. So as you can see here with this order block that I just drew, you can see this massive wick on the daily time frame that's just been formed, right? And I can get rid of all of this. And if you were to enter here, you would target 
your next order block that decided to um, break structure. In this case, because you don't actually have any breaker structure just yet in the opposite direction, what you could do is you just target the order block that's there, which essentially would be your resistance zone in this case, because that is uh, that area over here is where price decided to make a shift um, in structure, right? Now, it's not a shift in structure on the higher time frame, but if you go on a smaller time frame, it's a shift of structure. So you get rid of, I can get rid of that area and you can just target, you know, maybe 50% of the area or even literally just the bottom of that area. Um, and you still get one to two because your stop loss here would be here. Now you've got a one to 2.5. If you were to put it exactly there, now you've got a one to three. So it all depends on how you want to do it. Um, but that's your order block. And that answers your question over there. Um, I don't trade. Thank you, bro. Oh, yes. I appreciate you. You're, you're good. I don't trade order blocks, so I'm not going to tell you 100% that is how you trade order blocks. It's part of how you trade order blocks, but there's a lot more to go inside of it, right? But that just gives you the basics, basically. Um, so, yeah, going back off to what I was saying. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, we see the impulse. We've got the correction. Um, and then we had our entry. Now, we've got our entry. Did we get our entry? Yeah, so we had our entry here, basically, right? Um, this is what actually caused us to lose that trade because although we didn't have structure breaking the 61.8 and we had this fat candle going up, which also broke the 61.8 and the 38.2 all together, the likelihood of this, if you go and back test it again and again and again, the likelihood of this happening and price coming to correct itself after this impulse is likely. And then what it will do is it will continue going up in that direction. Now, in this case, that didn't happen. Um, we got stopped out. Obviously, we're targeting a one to three. We got stopped out. Price just wanted to do whatever it wanted to do. Now, the next week, if we see USD CAD going that direction, guess what? Your, um, your analysis was correct, but your entry, where you entered in price, was wrong. And there's nothing you can do about that, right? Unless you decided to enter from down here, which isn't part of the strategy. So that happens. Now, the, now there's a rule which says if price breaks the 38.2 after giving you an entry signal, don't chase the trade. But in this case, right, the reason why I decided to enter in the first place is because you, if you see the market where price will create a very bullish or very bearish engulfing candle, what price tends to do, will, it will come back maybe 50% of the way to clear the inefficiency, right? Because price moves in zigzags, it, whether it's up or down, um, diagonal, one way or the other. Price will usually come back and clear that in, in inefficiency to regulate itself and then also go back in the direction that it needs to go in. That is the only reason why, as you can see, right? Why I decided to get in. I still got in at a 61.8 for this one. Because you can see, after it broke the 38.2, after giving us our entry signal, the entry signal is the break of the 61. This candle did both. It broke above the 61.8 and the 38.2. So it still gave us, gave us an entry signal because the um, signal is the break of the 61.8. Now, straight after that, what did it do? It came back 50% of the way and gave us this rejection over here, right? And then what did it do after that? It just came crashing down and it hit our stop loss. So in that sense, right, this does happen where... Mm -hmm. It will clear the inefficiency and then also stop you out or it will clear the inefficiency and actually go in your direction as well. So it's a 50-50, it's, you know, any position is always 50-50, right? It's not always going to go in your direction. It's just up to you whether you want to take that risk or not. I decided to take that risk and I think I called this one out. I didn't tell you I got in though. There's a reason why I didn't tell you that I got in because obviously it broke above the 38.2. So it's up to you whether you want to do it or not, but I'm just showing you like these are things that you can watch out for to see whether you want to get in or not. It's as simple as that. Uh, so that was one trade that I decided to take, and that was on a weekly setup, right? Um, but obviously, as I said, because it broke above the 38.2, it technically was classed as invalidated, right? As part as part of the the uh, you know official setup. So that one doesn't even count. For me, it counts because I took a loss, but setup wise, it doesn't count. Um, so that was that one there. Uh, so I can clear that because I'm done with that pair. 
Next one is EuroCAD. As I said, this one hit TP. It was straightforward and simple. Uh, this was a reversal setup. So let me show you what happened. So we had, where was we? This was on the Monday. Yeah, because I did last one on the Sunday. So this was a reversal setup. Now you can see over here, we have a low. And what did price do? Price broke below it. But then as soon as it broke below it, we was looking for an EMC uh, setup to the downside. Price failed to break them, um, stay within the zone and it broke above. Now we've given this, now it's given us an opposite uh, EMC setup. So impulse and a correction here, right? So whenever you see something like this, and this is a little tip, whenever you see an EMC form, whenever you see an EMC form, like let's say to the downside, for example, in this case like this, and then it forms another EMC in the opposite direction, take the other one. Not the first one that was formed, take the other one. Now, I'm only saying take the other one if it's an instance like this where it fails to hold that area. So if it breaks that area and then fails to hold that area because it broke above in the opposite direction and then formed another e EMC, take the second one. Don't take the first one, right? Reason being, as you can see, what did price do? Uh, well, technically, really, you shouldn't have taken it because it broke above the opposite direction. And then the fact that it broke above the opposite direction, you also would have checked the higher time frame. Weekly was bullish and the monthly was also bullish. So you wouldn't have taken the sell setup on this because of those two factors, plus the third factor where it broke above the area that it was supposed to hold. So you wouldn't have taken it. If you did take it, you would have got your entry signal, but you would have got stopped out because price went higher rather than lower, right? Um, so in that case, what happened was we mark our fib um, and we are basically trying to get involved with the next setup. So what we're doing here is waiting for that break of the 61.8, which is the next candle or this candle now, basically. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so that's just a rejection. So that's the break, right? Now... Entries at the 61.8 over there. We're targeting nine negative 27. Um, and then obviously your stop loss just one to three, basically. Now got tagged in. Price broke above it uh 30 minutes after New York session. So got tagged in, and then for the next day as well. That's when so in other words, like you had a good 12 hours to get in after the entry signal. So you do have time to get in. Now that is where you would have moved your stop loss to break even because price broke above the 38.2, right? Now, if you wanted to scale in, and I don't advise this, if you do ever want to scale in, look for some sort of structure around the 38.2, as you can see over here, right? And enter from that level and still target the negative 27, right? Um, and then you can put a you can you can target a one to two, uh, or you can put your stop loss anywhere below the next fib. Um, so it can be like down here, for example, and you get like a one to one point five or a one to two. It's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to target a one to three, then go ahead. But you're gonna have a tight stop loss, um, in the sense of, you know, in, sorry, in comparison to uh, to the original move. Um, but if you wanted to scale in, you could do that. Now. As you can see, you would have got a second entry if you did try and scale in with a second position around the 38.2 area. Um, and we're floating in profits now, deep. As soon as that hit TP, as you can see, that took from our entry signal, that took literally 20 hours, less than a day, straight to TP, right? Potentially, you could have taken partials as soon as you move your stop loss to break even. So that way, if, you, if price does come back down to hit your stop loss at break even, you would have at least taken something off the table rather than ending up with zero and then also having to pay swap fees for... Uh, actually, no, you wouldn't have had to pay swap fees because it was less than 24 hours, um, but you, you would have ended up with commissions. So it would have been zero minus whatever your commission is. So you would have ended up with like, you know, less than $5, depending on how on your account size or anything like that. So that's something you can do if you wanted to, but that was less than 20 hours. Uh, and that was... One trade that I did call out that hit TP, and that's one out of five that I mentioned. So that was that one, right? Next one is Euro CHF. Now, this one, if you remember from the last call, if you had if you joined the last call, 
I said I didn't like the fact that price was at this resistance area, although there was EMC set up around this area. Um, and again, this is more of like a uh, a reversal setup, although price did create a W formation. If anyone knows what that is, I'll show you in a sec. Um, yeah, I just didn't like the fact that price is at the resistance area. So one thing I said, you can buy into a resistance, you can buy into a resistance area, but you can't buy whilst you're at a resistance area, right? And and vice versa, if you're uh, if you're selling as well, you can sell into a support area, but you can't sell whilst you're in it, right? Because you're gonna get uh, reactions to price like this. When I said price was in a resistance area, I do it like that price was at a resistance area. We just we did get lucky in the sense of price did climb back into that resistance area a bit deeper, and then price completely rejected, right? Which is exactly what I said was gonna happen, but I didn't expect price to actually hit TP before it happened. Right. So overall, um, you know, your your directional bias in that sense is still correct. I just didn't take the trade because obviously of that resistance area that I said I didn't like the price was at. So I chose not to take that one. Right. Although I knew there was a setup there. So the whole point of this is all about probability. What's the likelihood of the price always going to hit TP, especially when it's at or going into a resistance area? Right. Think about where your TP is at. If your entry is all the way below that area, the red zone, and your TP is literally inside that area, you have to go past the 38.2 break even, and then you also have to go past the 0% fib, right? And all of these fib levels are essentially areas where price could re react from. So price could have easily broke above the 38.2 and then tanked. It could have broke above the 0% uh, fib and then tanked. And you would have hit TP. So it's all about probability and risking what you're willing to risk. In this case, obviously we've got the um, impulse and we've got the correction. We had a W formation. We had this area over here, which is literally what held price. Um, and I'll do a replay so you can see it. Right. And then we've got the red zone, which is more of a, a weekly resistance area. So the fact that we're in that area, I don't like it in the first place but the setup is still there. Our entry is below that area, so you can still get a chance to enter and take it into that area, right? And then we've got the break, which is that candle there. Entry at the 61.8, target the negative 27. Stop loss just below the 88, get a one to three, right? And we also have structure that's being formed because as from the bottom of this wick, right? Which is the last low. We have several candles that are formed that just, uh, sorry, several different colors that are formed before price broke above the uh, 61.8. Go out, retest there. So we would have set a pending limit order. Um, and then we've got a retest there. And instantly within the first four hours, price broke above the 38.2. You would have moved your stop loss to break even, taken partials, done whatever you wanted, needed to do. And literally straight to TP. That took eight hours because these are four hour candles right so two candles eight hours straight to tp as soon as that happened price climbed a little bit higher right now this would have hit a 61 minus 61.8 if anyone decided to target like tp2 um there isn't a tp2 by the way but some people put 61.8 if they want to that would have hit a 61.8 uh there and then from there you can see price instantly dropped which is exactly what I said it was going to do. It's just about probabilities. I wouldn't have wanted to take this trade. And then as soon as I enter, I don't get a chance to break even. And then we instantly, you know, start crashing down. I would have taken a loss. I didn't take that one because even EuroCAD was a much clearer trade compared to EuroCHF in regards to where LTP was and where price is currently at right now. It's as simple as that, right? But as you can see, this one, Still a setup, so that's two for two, right? Out of uh five, if I'm correct. So if anyone's keeping tally, keep tally. Uh, but that's two for two so far, right? Okay, so here we've got another one which is UK 100, uh, FTSE 100. It's the same as US 30, NAS 100, SP 500. It's the same, it's an indency. Um, it's just the UK version of what a NAS 100 is, right? Um, so same scenario over here, and this is a good one actually. Didn't call this one out 
like on last week's call, because obviously it didn't form, it only formed on Wednesday, so during the week, right? And this is why we always wait for a candle closure. So we've got the second retracement candle. I actually know, I did call this one out. I actually said, so I did call this one out. If you guys were here, or some of you were here, the price was here when I called it out, basically, right? And I said, okay, so we have the impulse and we have the correction, right? Now, given the fact that this, these two corrections is smaller than the impulse, which is a good thing when you have a second retracement candle, I don't like where price is at now because price hasn't actually hit the uh, the, the 38.2. I think I, where did I do it? I think I did it from here. And I said price didn't hit uh, the 38.2, right? Now, I'm not counting this candle as touching the 38.2 because I also wanted price to actually come back into this area that I've drawn which gives me an extra confluence, right? Because you can say price hit the 38.2 here, which it did, no problem. But I want extra confirmation and I want price to come back to tap into this box and then react from there, right? It doesn't have to, it doesn't literally have to climb inside the box and come down to the 61.8. As long as I get a tap inside that box, we're good to go, right? Um, Because now if I was to do this, for example, it's, a bit strange. I don't ever like to put. I don't ever like to put. Um, you know, the fib on the same candle. I would like to do it from a different candle to another candle. So that's why those are the reasons. That's why I said. Uh, you know, I wanted price to create another daily candle, and that's exactly what it did. All right. Next candle was a daily candle. Now this is where I said I don't like to put fib on the same candle. That's the same candle. I'd rather do it from a different candle to another candle. And that's the way to draw a fib. You draw it from the high to the low. Simple. In this case, we're doing it from the low to the high because we want to get involved with the next impulse, right? This would have been, um, this is still low to high, but this is like from left to right. We want to do it from right to left because we want to get involved with the next impulse, right? Um, now, this way from left to right is actually drawing it to measure the retracement where price could stop at which is why i said okay if i did it like this to this price could stop at a 38.2 but i want a second retreat a third retracement candle and that's exactly what it gave us now i move my fib as you know and i want to get involved in the next impulse that's exactly what price did when i said i want third retracement candle then i would decide to get in gave us a third retracement candle right and now i just wait for that break of the 61.8 that's the break of the 61.8. Price didn't create structure because you don't see different colors being formed before price broke the 61.8. So in this case, you have two options. You can either uh, put your entry exactly at the 61.8 and your stop loss at the bottom of the 100% zero, um, zero, FIB, or you could put your entry a little bit lower so that you can get the one to three. Right. If you did it at 61.8 with your stop loss down here, you would have got a one to two or just over a one to two. So it's totally up to you. In my in my uh, in my case, entry at a 61.8, because I never want to miss a trade and you know I don't really care about drawdown or getting stopped out, whatever happens, happens. Right. Now I put my stop loss exactly where it usually goes when the risk structure being formed because I wanted to take that risk. Right. Now, this is what happened. So we got tagged in, right? Literally eight hours after. So the beginning of the uh, London session and price took off, right? Stop loss that break even because obviously we got the break as uh, 38.2 now. And again, remember when I said, if you ever want to scale in again, look for some sort of structure that's being formed around the 38.2. So if you wanted to enter again, you would have entered around here, still targeting a negative 27, right? Now, again, the reason why I say I don't suggest it is because if price actually wanted to come back and not hit TP, although you would have, um, you know, broke even on one trade, you would have lost out on the scaling trade. So in other words, it's like you've defeated the purpose of scaling in in the first place. But it's all down to preference. Of course, scaling in means that you you make more off of one trade, especially if price is going in that, in, in that direction. But when it's not clear which direction price wants to go in, and obviously scaling in is a bit hard. Um, so don't scale in if you're not confident in that trade. But obviously scale in if you are confident in that trade. Totally up to you. But in this case, obviously we did get tagged in. Um, 
And that took literally after the entry signal, that took a day and eight hours or a day and four hours, depending on, um, you know, whether you decide to get in from here or from here. Really, you should have got in from here because that's our retest. And that's free for free now, right? As simple as that. Next one was, that was not it. I'm looking at that one for next week. Um, yeah, so these are the two. that I was waiting for. Hold on, let me make sure this is right. Yeah, see, these are the two that I was waiting for. Is it two or three? Let's see. Yeah, so these are the two that I was waiting for. And gold did hit TP, by the way, I remember now. Um, so yeah, it was actually four that hit that hit TP. And I'll go over that in a sec. But these are the two that I was waiting for, for price to come back and actually, you know, take us in that direction. But it didn't. Um, it was NAS and S&P 500. Uh, now, in this case, this is what we would have done. So we did see the impulse and correction to the downside. But again, with that being said, didn't like that this was here in the first place. Um, so I would have drawn something like this, right? Yes, we held, which this candle, which is why this candle, uh, this bearish candle did form. But straight after that, what the price do? It broke above it. So this is an invalidated setup. Um, I don't think we got our entry signal in the first place. So did we... Uh, we did get our entry signal, but again, I still don't take it anyways for the entry signal because I didn't like this weekly resistance turn support area, right? And it's only acting as support because of this area here. As you can see from this candle here, price acted as support, right? But also think about the pair you're trading. Long term, NAS is bullish. So even though price came down to this area, you know, with... The smallest amount of pips, a rejection is still a rejection. I didn't want to trade into that area back down to the downside because our TP is way below the area. I rejected off of this area. And on top of that, as I said, long term was still bullish. So I don't want to sell that something that is long term bullish. Right. So that was just my indication to say, okay, do you know what? I don't need to force this trade. And I definitely don't need to, you know, um, to take it. Let me just. And reanalyze and see what what potentially could come up. Now, remember when I said if price breaks um, a zone that you're looking at and then creates another EMC to the second to the up um, in the opposite direction, take that one. That's exactly what happened here. Price broke above, created an EMC. Although the um, retracement was a bit strong, long term was still bullish. So therefore, I'm taking it right. So EMC. Uh, impulse correction and then what you would have done is obviously we've already identified the weekly and the monthly as bullish so there's no doubt about that now we would have placed our fib right and we would have seen okay price tried to climb up and i actually watched this candle this one candle i watched it and it was news i was hoping for it to close it did it so the next day it started to climb up again and then what did it do it didn't, it failed to break above again And then created a wick to the downside. So we adjust our fib because technically we're still in that area. Um, obviously, you can see from here as well, still in that area. We didn't close below it again. After this, we've got this break 61.8 break and the 38.2. Now, if you remember, um, with I think it was USD CAD. Yeah, remember with USD CAD when I said, sorry, I just drew the fib wrong. Remember when I said with USD CAD? When it breaks the 61.8 and the 38.2, it will should it should retrace 50% of the way and then create some sort of rejection or reaction in your desired direction. As you can see from the 61.8, we did get a reaction towards the upside. So in this case, price actually, uh, where did price go? So price actually, I was watching this as well, actually. I was watching this very carefully to see for price to break the 38.2. because I think news came out around the time that price hit this area here. So what price did was it came down, hit the 38.2, and it did climb to the 38.2. 38 uh, 38 and then it decided to close down here, right? So I was watching that very carefully. Now, what I was expecting was from um, NAS was the exact same thing, right? I was expecting price to come back down to 50% 50, 50 of the way, at least, right? Or even at least tag us in, I think, uh, you know, Well, hoping that that's that that's boy boy.
Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I was wait I was waiting for price to tag us in, um, and it closed above the thirty eight point two. And then what did it do? It created several can several other candles to break above the thirty eight point two, and then decided to take off. Right, which is exactly why I said we couldn't take this trade because we didn't get our entry, although it gave us our entry signal. So long term, as I said, it was bullish. Our directional bias was correct. And that's the that's the main thing here. As long as you continue to get your directional bias correct, there's nothing to say that you, you know you can't trade. If if you can't get your entries, then it will be your entries that you need to work on, not your directional bias, or vice versa, depending on what you're struggling with. But as long as you've got your directional bias, you you are golden. It's as simple as that. So Nas, that's what happened with Nas. Couldn't get that one in. Uh, but as you can see, directional bias wise, in terms of were we right on the trade on the trend of the trade? Yeah, we was. So that's one of the ones that we didn't take. Um, so then that would have been one, two, three. We got gold, so that was four. So it would have been six trades in total as of um as of last week or this week just gone. Well, this week because technically it's still the same week. Um, but we only managed to take four, and then four of them hit TP, and then the other two. We couldn't get a trade in. So we couldn't, you know, enter. So we're still four for four at this point, right? Because you don't really want to count the other two because you never had a position in the first place. So that's the good thing about it. Um, S&P 500, as you can see, I still have my alerts and everything set. Same situation. So I'm not going to go over this one because it's literally this. NAS and S&P are essentially the same pair. S&P is just, uh, just moves slower than NAS. Not, not, not much slower, but it does move uh, a little slower than NAS. It's the same as gold and silver, basically. Like they have similar price action and similar candles, um, candle sizes and everything like that. Who's drawing? Yo. Yo, I'm about to bug me the fuck out. Give me a sec, guys. Sorry, give me a sec. All right. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so that was S&P 500. So I don't need to go over that one because it's the same as NAS. So I'm about that. Next one, uh, we had gold. Now, I called this one out as well. So we had our low over here. Now, gold is long time bullish. It's a long time, sorry, long term bullish. Um. But as you can see, price does look like it wants to come back down to around this area over here, potentially even stopping this area over here, right? Because that's look that's what price looks like it wants to do right now. So it could come down to this area, as I said, or even stop around this area over here, right? Now, our TP was literally before that area anyways. But what did price do? It broke this support, turned resistance area, so it was support holding all of this price action here, broke below, acted as resistance, right? It's acting as resistance, but we're back into the area. But because it broke below, we say it's acting as resistance until price decides to break above again, then it will turn and we would say it is acting as support until it does it again, the opposite. Then we would say it's acting as resistance. That's how, that's how you uh, formulate your ideas basically, right? So in this case, we've got an impulse, we've got a correction. Um, higher time frame, it was, you know, well, you can see here, we've got this green fractal here. So this would have been my weekly resistance area. And as you can see, because the weekly resistance area is above the daily uh, resistance uh, support area, you can say, okay, you're stacking your, your, your zones basically. So the weekly is here, price fell to break above the weekly, no problem. So we go down to the daily, Price is here. Price it clearly forget fell to break above the daily. So price is below the daily, and it's also below the weekly. So that's how you st um you know you stack your your zones basically. Um, if it overlaps, so if it's like the weekly is below the daily resistance area that you're looking at, then something's wrong. You need to you know you need to go back and and see what you're doing wrong basically. Um. So yeah, so weekly obviously we know we're uh, bearish. Daily we know we're bearish. So you would have put your fib from, from this high to this low. 
Uh, so basically the end of the retracement to the beginning of the retracement. Now your entry would have been after this candle. So it would have been here. Let's put it here, for example. Um, and then you would have hit your TP. Boom, right? Now that would have been your trade, your entry uh, from here. So this would have taken, that would have taken four days. However, we don't hold trades over the, well, I don't hold trades over the weekend. So this would have given you a setup on a Friday, right? Monday, you would have came back to the trade, literally two hours before London open or London session. So you would have got your entry again from Monday over here. Straight to TP, one day and 12 hours. That's how long it took. As you can see, price literally just dropped and didn't look back. That would have hit TP there, right? So that was that trade. And as you can see right now, what it's doing is it's acting as a support area and it's holding that area. As you can see by the the new wicks that's been formed with the candles uh, on the four hour time frame. So so that's that's number four. That's That was trade number four. Um, so four for four. That's odd. Yeah, so four for four um, for actual trades that we actually managed to get positions in. USD CAD, obviously I'm not counting, obviously because, well, I'm counting for my own self, but I'm not counting because I didn't actually, well, if you know the setups, you know you shouldn't have taken that one, right? Because it actually invalidated before we even decided to get our position. So that one doesn't count. But then you also have NAS 100 and S&P 500, which we didn't get our entry signal, which is similar to USD CAD. So those three, you're ignoring. But position-wise, like actual entries and getting tagged in, four for four. That is all of those pairs that happened this week, and they're all swing setups, right? As simple as that. Um, let, me, let me check the chat. Let me see. Uh, hell no. Let me see. Let me see. Who said to me? Oh, okay. Can I see it? Nope. Uh, da, 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 da. That's me. I hate everything for Trinidad. I'm waiting for masks. We've got a hoodie plus a mask. Is you not hot? <laughs> nah, bro. I'm in the UK, bro. Shit. You know the weather down out here. Right now, it's about, let's see. Even my phone recognized me with the mask on. Right now, it's about 10 degrees. Celsius, and for those that do Fahrenheit, I'll tell you what that is. You guys are backwards. Um, how do I do this shit? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so Fahrenheit, it's fifty degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know. I don't know the difference between. Well, obviously, I know the difference because temperature wise, but that's what it is. Uh, one, two of my free trades. Roxy, what setups did you take? I hope you took the ones uh the ones that I posted, unless you decided to take some of your other ones. Uh let me know in the chat. Prop phones with FTML, can I use? Oh, yeah, perfect. So I know someone mentioned um the intro day. I'll come on to that in a sec. I just want to um answer the questions in the chat. Um yeah, so with FTMO. Can I use one account? Yeah, so you don't actually... So don't let these words... I think, yeah, so I was, I was talking to you earlier. So now, obviously, I'm on a... I'm talking like this now. It's easier rather than texting. Don't let the account names fool you. Like, it's used for a certain reason. Let me see if I can pull it up and I, I can explain it better to you. Uh, bear with me. Da -da -da -da. Um, all right, cool. So from my understanding, and when I say from my understanding, um, from what I remember, right, with a standard FTMO account, you're not allowed to hold over the weekends, right? You're also not allowed to trade news. So when they say you're not allowed to trade news, not that you can't be in a position when you're in news because... Um, what you need to do is you need to go through the terms and conditions, right? Because the terms and conditions will actually stipulate exact rules 
for you not to trade news. And a lot of these other prop firms say the same thing. You're not allowed to trade news. But when you actually read the terms and conditions, what they actually tell you is you're not allowed to trade news two minutes before news comes out. And when it's when it's news, they will say high, high impact news. They don't really care about orange folders, gray folders or, or yellow folders. No, they're talking about high impact news or so red folders, basically things like NFP. Um, unemployment rates and, and so forth, right? They will say two minutes before you are not allowed to enter a position and two minutes after you are not allowed to exit a position. If you trade like that, you're going to breach your account. However, if you're already in a trade five hours before, one hour before, 30 minutes before, right? And you hold through news and price still doesn't hit your TP or price doesn't um, hit your stop loss, right? If you hold before like way before from those time frames that I just told you and you still hold through news and you decide to exit two hours after news, you are good because technically what you, what you was doing is you wasn't actually trading news. You were holding the position that you were in before news came out. So you're golden in that sense. Right. And then on top of that, even if you were in a position and you opened it several hours before news came in, but then news came in, went in your direction, meaning it just hit your TP quicker you haven't actually traded news because you were in that trade before, long before. That means you were, you know, you weren't really risking a setup in that sense. You were actually in the right side of the setup. And they know that because you were in the trade several hours before. So what they will tell you is no news trading, but they can actually go back and say and look at their account and then realize, oh, this person isn't someone that is, you know, just trading, but risking capital for no reason basically no this person actually has a profitable strategy or at least they know exactly what they're doing they're not just coming in trading nfp and buying and selling in at the same time you know with two lot sizes hoping for price going you know going in that direction that's what it means when they say no new trading no weekend holding um and on top of that you also have a leverage of one to 100 now when it comes to leverages it doesn't matter to some traders, but to some to, to other traders, it matters. If you're a trader that doesn't focus solely focus on, um, you know, risk percentage or um, money. Well, when I say risk percentage, I mean um, how much you're risking per trade. So if you're someone that doesn't focus on, uh, sorry, not focus. If you're someone that doesn't have a a set amount that you risk per trade every single time and you have different amounts and everything like that that's where leverage comes into play because you can have a one to 100 and still risk one percent per trade and then you can have one to 30 and still risk one percent per trade and guess what your tp and stop loss is all going to be the same but if you're someone that literally you only focus on the lot size and it changes from time to time to time again and again and again that's where your that's where leverage comes into it there's a lot more behind it but that that is literally that's the difference between it between choosing a swing account and a standard account obviously with a swing account you can hold over weekends for several weekends and you can obviously hold during news don't let them discourage you with the way that they word things it's just if you know, no thanks it's, it's just that i wasn't you know. sure it's just that i wasn't sure if i could like uh get in a trade and being there for like MITP is within six hours. So I, was, yeah, I just thought that, you know, yo, yo, no, you thank you very much. Bro. You are fine. Like they're not going to breach your account, bro. They really, that's for, that's for high risk traders. Like, well, sorry, not high risk traders. Well, they are high risk traders, but basically people that do um high frequency because they don't want people with that do that try and trade high frequency with, a leverage of one to one one hundred because it means that their buying power is a, a lot greater. That's mm. why your one to one hundred leverage is one to one hundred because it's much greater than a one to thirty. <clears throat> okay, that's the difference between it. So go ahead, like same way you trade because I know I know how you trade and obviously I've seen your setups as well. Go ahead and get the swing um, the the standard account, bro. A swing account doesn't necessarily mean if you swing trade you must take the swing account. No, it's different rules. For that reason, that swing account really is for position holders. Position holders is actually a step further than swing traders. 
EMC is a swing setup because obviously you're holding for days, but you can actually hold for less than a day and hit TP. As I showed you with EuroCAD, it hit 20 hours. So therefore, why am I taking a swing account when I know some setups that I take, even though it's a swing setup, it can hit within a day. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Even weekend holding, like you can, you can hold on a weekend on a normal account. It says you can't hear, but you can actually hold. They just monitor your account and see what you do. And I know this because obviously I'm not with FTMO, but I know this because I've spoken to a few people that are with it. And I've also spoken to some um, uh, some members in the FTMO community as well on, on Discord. It's the same. It's the same thing. They actually monitor your account on a day on like on a on a person person basis. So if they realize that you know you're doing something wrong, they will, they'll they'll reach you. But they will also let things slide. But from my from from my understanding of like what how you trade, go ahead and get the standard account, bro. Like they ain't, there's no way you can breach that, unless obviously you open up a trade two minutes before before news. Then obviously you're fucked. Oh, Alpha Capital Ventures. Really? Oh, thank you, bro. When people join it, bro. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, so the answer that, Richard, you can show us again how you mark your daily resistance zones. Uh, bro, one more, exam one more example on what you said, MC for me, MC. I think I might have gone over that. Yeah, I actually did because I showed you the first one and I showed you the second one. But I'll show you how I mark up my uh, weekly resistance zones. Uh, let's see. I don't want to show you that one. I'll show you this one. So this is why I use fractals, because I don't really be second guessing my highs and my lows. But I look for re recent fractals that are broken. So for example, now I can see this one's broken. It's clear as day. This one's broken, right? Uh, Yeah, it's clear as day. This one's broken. So what I'm going to do is I want to do something like this. I'll do the body to the wick. Depend um. So if it's a buy candle, a bullish candle, I'll do the bottom of the body because obviously that's where the next candle formed, right? So after the bullish candle opens here and it goes up this way, opens here and it goes down this way, right? So I'll do it from here to the wick, only on the daily time frame. If it's a weekly, <coughs> monthly, I'm only going to include the wicks because I don't want to cover too much of the area. But when it comes to the daily and anything below it, I will, I will do the body to the wick, right? So I'll do something like that. Now, that's a breaker structure. Of course, I can just draw a line, but I want to see an area to hold. If I draw a line, I can't see an area. I would have to visualize it. So that's why I do that. Now, what I'm expecting for price to do is to come back down to this area over here. That's what I'm expecting. But before I even expect anything, before I do anything further, I go over here. I look at where price is recently at. Same thing with the, uh, with the, the fractals. I only include the wick, so I can do this, right? I'll just do that, change the color. That's a wick, that's um, an area over there. I also have this area over here, it's this, which technically covers the same thing. But since price is already at this area, I can delete this one. So I can say this is a resistance area here. If price was to break above this area also, guess what? This will be my next area, All right? And that's the same thing that I would do on a weekly and a monthly. Look. And you see how I just marked this one up on a weekly? I'm on a monthly time frame now, and it's the exact same area. So I know that that area is valid. So that's what I will do. Um, and it's pretty straightforward and simple. But obviously, as you can see now, although I was looking at this and saying, okay, this is bullish, we're actually at weekly resistance area. So I'm not going to be looking for, well, you could look for a setup, but it depends on what happens. Given the fact that we obviously we've tapped into this area four times now, one, two, three, four. Even if he was to find an EMC setup, I'm not going to take it because we tapped into this area four times, right? Clearly, price doesn't want to hold. Depending on where price holds into and where we could potentially get TP, but given the fact that this wick is over here, so even if we were to get a low down here, for example, and I will draw my fib like there, our TP is all the way down here. This has held four times. Of course, you can say, the more times price has touched a, uh, a support or resistance area, it could get destroyed because obviously, but at the same time, you can also say it's held for a reason. Price ain't going through that area. 
So again, it's all down to probability. What's the likelihood of price going in a direction? In, in that direction, do you want to take that setup? If you want to take it, take it. But if you want to be cautious and take something else, take the something else, don't take that one. So it's all down to how you want to take it, but the setups are still there. That's how I do my resistance zones. And it's the same, same thing. I just use the fractals, Williams fractals, and I change the period to a two. Because it's just going to mark out every single two candles and it changes and updates it. Uh, sorry, it changes and updates itself every now and again. Uh, well, I say every now and again, but every, every time a candle's formed, basically, it will change itself depending on what time frame you're on. And there's no second guessing. It's not needed. Um, how you drew that box? Yeah, I just answered that. Don't forget the W formation. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, w formation, where was it? Oh, no. Uh, okay, so with the W formation, I did show you the pair. I think it was a... Uh, It was this one here. So I did show you the pair, but actually, basically, what a W formation is, I'll be honest, man, it's simple. It's this. You get a double bottom. Sometimes you get a double bottom, sometimes you don't. So we've got a double bottom here. Right? Over here, you can see that, and it's a W. Once price creates a W, what price would normally do is come back to this area here, so the first leg, or it'll come back down to the neckline, whichever one. It doesn't actually have to come back down to the neckline, but Usually it does come back down to the neckline. Sometimes, depending on how extended this leg is, if it's extended like that, likelihood of it coming down to the neckline is highly unlikely. So it will just come back down to this area here or any area in between, right? But if it's a normal W like that, where it now creates like a double top basically all day just after, what it will do is it will come back down to that neckline and then go higher. It's literally similar to like a head and shoulders. It's just, there's no, uh, a head and shoulders, basically, you'll see something like this. So you've got your left shoulder, you've got your head, and you've got your right shoulders. This is an inverted head and shoulders, by the way. Um, but it's similar, literally, if you think about it. The only difference is you don't have this break over here, or, or peak, whatever you want to call it. Um But if you were to ignore this part here, you can see first leg, second leg. And then what price is going to do, as you guys know, when you have that, price should come back down to the neckline. So this area over here. So it'll come back there to go higher. It is literally the same thing, right? So in this case, with W formation, as you can see, uh, we had it here. Now, they're not always going to be perfect, but the idea is, remember, it's an idea. So therefore, you just have to pay attention and see where price is at. Obviously, this is W. Um, I'm going to ignore this because of the massive wick that we just had down here. Um, so we've got that. We've got this here. And we've got that. Right? Uh, no, sorry. Ignore me. I know what I did wrong. What I did was this. Usually, I don't count this massive wick. But because we had this, this candle here, that's why I counted it. So I did this. That, there. There. And then went up further. Um, so basically, as I said, it's never going to be perfect. That if we just had it, so if this black candle wasn't here and we had this massive wig, I wouldn't have counted it because basically you would have said that's that's that that's not a good uh, a good um, example basically. Uh, so in other words, just try and visualize it because it's never always going to be perfect. When you do get the perfect ones, oh, it is sweet. But when it's not perfect, you kind of just have to visualize it and see where price is at. That's why. I even forgot how to how I drew it the first time when I just showed you just now because this isn't a perfect one, but we know it's there. Well, I know it's there anyways, right? Um, and it's the same thing. If uh, whether you have a when you have a head and shoulders an inverted head and shoulders, you have the same thing when it comes to a W formation or an M formation. It is literally the opposite. You do the same exact thing. Um, in this case, as you can see, and this is what price looks like is about to happen. You've got your first leg, you've got that, and the price looks like it wants to come down. So let's say we get another bearish candle, right? If it does create another bearish candle, it could easily stop here, which lines up with this support area here, or come back down to this neckline, which is literally a resistance area now. And then what it will do is from there, it go down. But we, you can see we have an M, right? 
Or, depending on what Price wants to do, it could even create a head and shoulders. If it does create a head and shoulder, uh, da -da, so that's your that would be your left shoulder, your head, your right shoulder, and then if it does one or two, it can stop anywhere around here, or even come back down to this area to go low. As simple as that. And then on top of that, depending on how you guys want to do it, you want your free touch trend line. So you can start stacking confluences if you want to. You've got a free touch trend line. So you know after the third touch, price is definitely going to come down. That third touch will now be in line with your actual retest of the right shoulder. Start stacking your confluences. So that's what the, the W formation is. Um, obviously, the M is just the invert version. Um, also, another thing, if you guys... Uh, there's there's such thing called um well I don't know there's not an actual name for it but some people are better buyers like when they visualize the charts they can see buy setups better than sell setups and vice versa um but if you guys are in, ever in doubt of a setup that you can't see clearly but you want to take it click right click this area here and then click uh where is it invert scale. And it literally flips the chart upside down for you so you can see the charts better. Maybe, maybe not. But don't forget, like, once you've inverted it and you've marked it up, put your scale back to normal and take what you see. Because obviously we can see right now it's, it looks like it's going bearish. But then if you invert the scale, you're probably looking, okay, shit, let me mark this up. We're looking bullish, right? You go and take a bullish setup, but you're actually taking the opposite setup as you wanted to in the first place. The whole point of inverting the scale is to identify the market better in your eyes because maybe you're struggling to see it. So that's another technique that you guys can use. Um, because someone just mentioned inverted charts here. Um, Richie, when you get a chance to do my show fib settings, yep. So it's literally there. So we've got the hundred percent fib, we've got it at 0 0.88. I'll put it here as well. Take a screenshot, do whatever you want to do, but it's a zero, 0 0.382, 0 0.618. one which is equivalent of 100 so it's just the one the one and the zero so the top and bottom um and then you've got negative 27 which is our tp1 and the only tp um feel free to go and do the zero point the, the minus 0 0.618 but fuck around and find out it's totally up to you um and then we've got the 0 0.88 which is like our stop loss area basically that is the fib uh send Uh, you follow EMC, bro, or your own strat. Right, it's EMC. I'm just showing you guys how I understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can go and check Brian's, um, what do you call it? Course content in, in the lab. I'm getting twisted, but, you know, if, if you don't understand or if there's some, if you feel like there's something you're missing, that's what this is for, basically. I'm just showing you some extra bits. Like, think of a film. When they, when they give you a film, when they give you behind the scenes, And then on top of that, you've got the film and then they give you the director's cut, the extra bits that they never showed when they released the original version. That's what this is, man. I said Zoom W. <laughs> hey, listen, I've got, I don't want to put the mask on now because I can't, I can't see through it, but um, I've got a video coming out. I'll put the mask on. There's different masks comes in that coming out, man. I'm telling you, um, forget FTM or Alpha Capital so much better. Uh, better trading condition rules. Uh, it depends on which it depends on which um country you're in. I'll be very real. Um, FTMO is goated in the sense of, um, like, they they're one of the original, like the the Godfather type shit. So, it's it's all down to preference. I'll be very honest. Um, I don't know much about capital alpha capital, but I know for a fact when it comes to withdrawals, um, FTMO they don't have. a target limit for you to make a withdrawal. Whereas some other prop firms, you have to have a target limit and you have to hit that target limit in order to make a withdrawal. But FTMO, as long as you're profitable um, during that calendar cycle, right, you can be $5 up and withdraw that $5. Do you know what I'm saying? But other prop firms, you have to hit that, that 8% or 10% profit target, even after being funded in order to make a, uh, a withdrawal. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, full put. <laughs> we'll put their account during news. They'll kill me. I'm not about to go over news again, though. No, that's, yeah, going over news is long, but I'll I'll make a new video for sure. Um, at some point, 
But at the same time, I went over it last week as well. Like, so just go and check that out. Um, two minutes before your news, you breach your account. Yeah, two minutes. There's rules. Like some prop firms say two minutes, some say four minutes. You're not allowed to because I'll be very if you know when it comes to trading high impact news, you know what the market's gonna do. If you're already in a trade, by the way, right? You will understand literally less than five minutes before high impact news hits. You will see your account fluctuate. You might be in profit an hour before new, um, high impact news hits, deep profits. And then as literally five minutes before new, um, the news hits, price has flipped the script. You are in major drawdown now. But as long as you're in the right direction of the trade, when news hits, guess what? You're in more profit than you was before an hour ago. So that whole point of being in negative less than five minutes before news hits, it's a serious thing. That's why they tell you you're not allowed to open up trades during that time. Because a lot of people, what they will do is they will just slap a high lot size on. And this is what high um, um high frequency trading is, by the way. It's just on a on a on a scale of you're know, literally sitting there buying, closing immediately, buying, closing immediately, stuff like that. That's what high frequency is. Um but it's equiv it's the equivalence. Like that's the whole point of it. That's why they 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 say they'll breach your account if you do that. They don't want they want serious traders. But at the same time, yeah, I was, I was about to, I was about to say something wild, but I don't want to get into that. Um, please explain what what is fractal? Is an indicator on trading views that you use? Yeah, it's an indicator. It's a it just marks out the highs and lows basically. Price is fractal. If anyone's ever heard of heard anyone say that, um, yeah, there's. I'm not about to get into the definition of, of, of what fractal is, but it literally, just think of it like this, it just marks out the highs and lows, and it just helps you identify where those highs are and where those lows are. Um, there's no second guessing, it's as simple as that. We didn't go over the W formation, I just did it just now. Uh, I've read somewhere that the area has to be tapped in many times. It's likely to break because of liquidity resting above the area. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I said before. So... If it does, if it does get tapped in more than three times, then the likelihood of that area being broken can, it's not going to be, but it can be high. Not all, remember, nothing's guaranteed. So fuck around and find out. The whole point again is all down to probabilities. Do you want to risk that trade? If you don't want to, right, sit out. And when you do sit out, you'll realize that, yeah, I sat out for a good reason. It's as simple as that. Um, bro, stay dropping at source. Thank you for that. Good remembering. Bro, yeah, bro, bro, it's all good, man. So, uh, switching to line charts also help. Yeah, so switching to line charts. If anyone needs any line, um charts, like different color charts and what, well, not colors, but different um ways to identify the market. Like you've got this button here, so you can use the line tool. So if you go over here, click on the line tool. Uh, you can use. If I use these this line, for example, and I put it down there. What it's gonna do is it's gonna cover the body, right? As you can see, it doesn't actually attest for the wick. If I was to put a line on the wick now, as we can see it, and I go back to the line tool, you can see there's a gap in between. So it's still a good way to identify highs and lows because you can clearly see this, like it just looks like a mountain top, right? It's a very good way to identify it, just in case you get lost with the candles. Um, but again, that's why I'd be using the fractals because there's no second guessing for anything. But at the same time, like, you know, you, you can kind of know, like, with, where's a high and where's a low, but... I wanna What's your setting on the fractals? It's literally just one. I just use a two, a two. Oh, two. That's what yeah, I was going to say. It's, it's, two it's just a two, okay. it's a two period. I think standard comes as a 14. And that basically just means that every 14 candles, as you can see, look, now, now we've got less candles. But uh, because I need, I need to see... The daily candles very often 14 is way too you know it's way too big i don't want to be yeah. sitting back to every 14 candles i need to see every two candles because i need to see highs and lows this is this is more for like position holds so if you're holding for like weeks and months and then you can you know use higher periods but where you're gonna be doing um you know intraday setups or um you know swing setups that take maybe a day or two 14 is way too high. So I just use a two. Um, and it's the reason why it's a two, honestly, it's trial and error. Like I'm not just using a random number. It's trial and error. I've tried a three, 
a fight of four, a fight of five, and two works best. So don't come and ask me what's a two. No, I'll take works. your word for it. That's why <laughs> yeah, two I just asked. works. Yeah, yeah, literally. Um, but that's what that's why I use that one, man. It 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 does look like a lot of noise, but over time, like I'll be very real. Like you, you can kind of block out the noise. I I don't even see the the triangles anymore. That's how many times I've looked at triangles. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I like to use it as a confirmation. It is simple. Like that's literally the only indicator I, I I use. That everything else is is um you know price action, supply and demand, support and resistance. Um, and that's it. I don't even use trend lines. And you can change them too. You can change the color of them. You can change them yeah, from sure. the triangle to an arrow. So yep. yeah, I like yep. them. Thanks for saying like that. Crosses, dots. You can change the them. Squares. To oh, what? what? No, I didn't know that. Thank That's you. Like, I did yes, not know that. Say. Yeah, you change it how you want to change it to. But obviously, once you start changing them, they become bigger than uh, the actual candle. So then you got to figure out which which candle is it pointing at. So just be careful. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was using another one, but this one looks cleaner. There was another one I was using. Um, where was it? Just the arrows. They just look cleaner, though. Yeah, there was another one I was using. Uh, where is it? I think I might get rid of it. No, it's here. It was another one I was using. It was literally here. It's the same thing. It's just smaller. Um, but at the same time, as you can see, look. You see how it's just smaller? But at the same time, the period itself was a bit different. So it said 240 rather than a, a two. Now that 240 is minutes, basically. So 240 minutes. But at the same time, when I wanted to get a period of two, like every two candles, that period number there, that 240, it didn't match up to the, what the two was. So I had to get rid of that that um, that 240 one and literally leave it as simplistic as possible and just give me a two. Because there were, I noticed that there was some... Um, there were some um fractals that were being missed, and I compared the two, and I didn't realize until until like maybe three months ago. And that's what that's what uh you know that's what made the difference between losing a trade and and uh you know entering a trade that technically I shouldn't have entered, you know going going back on it. But I just use the Williams fractal. I don't use anything else. Let me even delete the other one because I just remember some bullshit. Yeah, there we go. It's deleted. Um, if you guys do want to, feel free. You can use obviously these indicators as well as like pivot highs and lows. It's the same sort of thing as you can see. But what it does is it actually tells you the price of that low. I don't know what you guys are going to use that for, but hey, there's options. Like, and as you can see, it literally lines up with the same fractals that I have. And there's no uh, let's see. Yeah, period setting is literally a two as well. So every two candles on the high and the low, it's the same sort of thing. It marks it out. As I said, it just tells you the price. There's also another one, uh, swing points. This one does the same thing. However, it just gives you dotted lines. Totally up to you how you want to do it. As I said, it's the only indicator I use. I know how to identify highs and lows, but I want to mark out specific ones. And I don't want to second guess. I don't want to say, mm, maybe I should mark out this zone or maybe I should mark out that one. No, that's the zone I'm going to mark out because it's literally pointing at it. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah. Hey, Ricky, really. can you type in the, go to indicators and type in D-W-M-Y? Which one? The first one? Uh, Let me see which one it is. Uh, so, hi Richie, what prop firm are you on? By FBTNC, SBTNC. Yeah, it's the first one. Yeah, so that's if for anybody who's wanting something to mark up your openings for your monthly, your daily, your weekly, your um, hours. For anyone who uses that, that's a good indicator for that because I like to mark up my openings for the month and the week and stuff like that. So that's a good indicator to you. Okay, okay, let's see. Oh, this is dope. So down here is the yearly. Okay. So as you can see, well, you can see it exactly from, from the yearly. We've been bullish this whole time. 
So that could be a good indication as to which direction you want to be taking a certain trade for a certain pair. Um, Thank you for that. so there you go. Um, uh, can you generalize an extra confluence for your MC cell? You can. Um, I wouldn't bother using it on a on on the actual setup time frame. So if you're looking for setups on a daily, I wouldn't bother using it on the daily. Um, I would use it on. The entry time frame, the four hour time frame. That will give you extra confirmation to say, yeah, okay, like we're going in a bullish direction for entries. But when it comes to your daily time frame, um, it might give you a false sense of direction. Even if you've got the um the fit, even if you've got the trend line in the in the right direction. Um, because again. You also need to identify whether you are bearish or bullish on the higher time frame. And if you haven't identified that, then there's no point using the trend line kind of thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's why I just use those boxes. It's as simple as that. As I said, I don't use trend lines. I don't need to. You could also use the trend line to keep you in a trade. Speaking of keeping yourself in a trade, and AT knows about this as well. You can also use... Hikanashi candles, it keeps you in the trade. It's the same thing as any other candle, but what it will do is it will tell you, it will tell you um, each, basically each candle itself will continue to stay green. And as long as it stays green, you know, okay, we're still going bullish until it turns a different color, right? Depending on, on how you set up your, your charts, sorry, depending on how you set up the color on your charts. Um, as you can see, this whole sector over here is all green. But if you go on, hold on, let me mark that out properly so you can see. So that's the high there and that's the low down here, right? So that whole sector there, uh, and I'll draw a, hold on, let me draw something so I can see. Let me draw a box. Okay, so if I went back to this area here, so as you can see on the Haikanashi, it is literally all green. But from here, from here, down here, as you can see, we've got blues and reds. Uh, sorry, I said blues and reds. Blues and blacks, which is bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, which is obviously normal, right? Because that's the direction that price that price travels in is, you know, ups and downs. But, yeah, that would keep you in a trade, basically. Not just for EMC, any other strategy as well. It will keep you in a trade long term because you know, okay, this candle hasn't, well, the high Kanashi candle hasn't changed color yet. It's as simple as that. So that will keep you in a trade as well. Um yeah, trend lines. Trend lines can really fuck you up. I'll be very real. Oh, CC, you already you already answered that question. I didn't even know that. Thanks for that. So you draw it from the daily. Yeah. 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 So exactly how I just drew it just now is how I draw all my daily charts. I'll draw it from um the what's it called? The body to the wick. Because again, this is a bearish candle, so I'll draw it from the top. Think about where... Okay, think of it like this, right? Because I know there's... You need to understand the dis, uh, the difference between um, a bullish candle, where a bullish candle opens and closes, and where a bearish candle opens and closes. Like, And you will understand how and why I draw my zones a certain way, right? And it's the same sort of thing, especially when you're drawing... Um... No, not not, ju not just you, um, Ezra, just like anyone else that's in here. Um and it's it's the same sort of way you would use to you would use what I'm about to say to draw all the blocks and um well just all the blocks actually not not in, um fair value apps um but basically it's it's simple like a bullish candle opens from the bottom and it closes at the top the next candle is this candle the reason why the next candle was literally on top of this candle is because it opened literally at the top where it closed which is literally down here so. Where you've got a bearish candle, if this bullish candle here opens down here, uh, don't yeah, that would be my last one. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the head up for the intraday, by the way. Um, so so where this opened here and closed here, the reason why this bearish candle literally opened next to it is because it's opened right next to it, and then we've got as I said, because it's bearish, it's it's got a close below. It's bearish because obviously we can see the color of it. It's just it's a, it's a no brainer, right? But even the bearish candle, you can see. It opened below because the next candle bearish it opened below, 
and it went further down. Same sort of thing, as I just said, with the bullish candles, right? So the reason why I've done it from here to here and not from here to here is because it's a bearish candle. So I would always do it from where it opens to the close. Uh, so no, not where it opens to the close. So from where it opens to the wick. Now that wick could be the high or it could be the low. Depending on if it's a bullish candle or if it's a bearish candle. In this case, because it's bearish, it will be the low of the wick, not the high of the wick. If it's a bullish candle, it will be to the high of the wick because it's a bullish candle, right? In this case here, for example, right? Now, although this is a bearish candle, it's a high. And it's only a high, right? Because the fractal says so. On a smaller time frame, it will definitely have broken some sort of structure, to the high right but on the daily time frame we can only see it as a wick which is why the fractal has also marked it as a high because the fractal knows that there's structure that has been broken or it has made some sort of high on the smaller time frame that we can't see on the daily time frame right this is also why i use the fractals because if i didn't use a fractal i wouldn't have seen this as a high do you know what i'm saying so in this case when i've got a candle like this for example Right, which is which is again, which is why I use the fractals. If it's something like this, what I will do is I would actually still take it from. I would I will take this candle, for example, as a blue candle. I wouldn't take it as a as a as a um as a black candle. I would take it for whatever the fractal tells me it is. If I get some sort of candle like this, so in this case, because it's a green candle, which means, uh, hold on. Yeah, because it's a green candle, right? Which means that it's even these ones hold on even these ones here like look we've got several black candles which is also telling me that they are highs right even the blue candles really and truly it's the blue candles that should be uh the greens right but in this case as you can see we've got several different color candles that are also you know having some sort of mismatch so whatever that candle tells me is it is so a green is obviously a high that's the way i will do it i will take it from the bottom to the top if it's a red, I will take it from wherever that closed to the low. That's how I will do it. So in this case, that's why I did it like that, right? And that's why I kept the area as simple as that. When it comes to the weekly, as I said, I just for the weekly, because I don't want to cover too much of the area. That's why I just do the wicks. And I'll show you why. Imagine if I covered the weekly exactly how I covered the daily. From here to here. Expand that expand that that way if i go to the daily time frame and i drop down now i've covered this entire area i don't want to see that because now when it comes to my analysis i'm fucked like i can't see shit it's pop it's overpopulated it's gonna be crowded by the time i start adding areas like this for example uh and then i start adding the fibs and then i start adding the trend lines and then i start adding um you know my w and m formations and then I start adding my head and shoulder formation like this. Like, what the hell can I see? And then I start adding, you know, some circles. But I can't see shit. That's why I never draw my weeklies like that. I would only include the weeklies. I would only include the wicks to the weeklies. But when it comes to the daily, because the daily is what I should be monitoring anyways. That's why I just, you know, I do it like that. That's that's how I do it that way. And GPP CSF, where would you market daily zones? Uh... Are you talking about price action right now? Before I even decide to show you. Perfect. Okay, so when you got something like this, right? I look at where price is at currently in this current time and moment. We have this area over here, right? This is, again, this is why I use my fractal, so I don't be second guessing. You're not going to have one perfect zone. You want to be reactive to the market. You want you actually want to react to the market and... and uh, so you want to react to what the market presents to you. So we've got this area over here. That's the support area, right? And obviously matches up with some areas over here. So, But I don't need to drag it across. We also have an area over here. Oh, before I move on. Now, the only reason why I did the wick here on a daily is because this is one massive candle and we have a wick that is like 50% of the way. Now, there's no rule to say because it's 50% of the way, I'm only going to include the wick. No, but I'm also thinking of the same way as I thought with the weekly time frame. If I had a massive candle like this, I don't want to cover the entire area like that. That is bullshit. 
So that's why I would just, if I ever see something like this on the daily time frame, I would just cover the wick because the wick, even the wick itself is a big area. So I would just cover the wick, right? Uh, so that's why I did that one there. Um, and then we also have a similar sort of situation over here with this candle here. So in this case, I'm just going to cover the wick. Um, so I would draw that, for example, like that. And then weekly zone, I go down here. I've got this area over here. Now I know this is the this is a literally a a good area because look how many candles are being respected over here. We've got so many areas that are wick in that area over here. Drag this across. We've got wicks over here. We've also got wicks over here, right? But I don't need these areas over here. I'm just proving the point. Uh, monthly time frame, monthly time frame. I don't even need to draw that shit because look, the same area that I was about to draw, literally is the same as the weekly, right? But for this instance, I can draw that as well. Just to show you, I can draw that across. So weekly and monthly is literally in the same area. Um, and then we've now, right now, as we speak, we've got this support area. Now, there's only a support area as of now. So you don't want to be looking for buys because it's literally, even though we're at support area, we are right next to a resistance and month, uh, sorry, a resistance on the weekly and the monthly area. So you don't want to be looking for buys in this area. However, if you want to be doing, because the, obviously the higher time frame is king, you can go down to the smaller time frame and look for some sort of setup to go lower. Uh, good to see that one wick is higher than the other. And then drop that wick collected. Look at it. There, there you go. Literally, there you go. Right? So it's just collecting all of that liquidity where, where stop loss was, was uh, resting to go lower. So right now, even though we're support area, you could go switch to lower time frames. And as I said... You don't want to be selling into, so you don't want to be selling whilst you're in a support area. So in this instance, right, don't quote me on it, but in this instance, if you did want to get into a trade, I would I would say drop down to the lower time frame and look for a, let me show you an example. Um, what I would say is look for, because remember, you're still in a support area. Look for a fresh, Change of um change of um change of direction, right? So look for price to break this area, uh, break this high over here, maybe on a one hour time frame. Wait for it to break this high, right? And create a change of character because technically from this area here we're, we're bearish. So wait for price to create a change of direction to the upside. But because remember we're still bearish on a weekly and a monthly. So once it breaks, uh, once it creates a change of character in a bullish direction. Wait for it to change of character in a bearish direction again, right? But this time, it's going to be a fresh change of character. After we've got a fresh change of character, uh, let me see if I can keep showing you. After we've got a fresh change of character, um, so maybe this, for example, right? So after we've got a fresh change of character here, ignore this. We don't need to worry about this one over here. But after we've got a fresh change of character here, for example, right? Now, in order to capitalize off of that, we want to see a fresh break of structure to the downside. Now, this is why I said, don't worry about this one over here, because I know as soon as price plays out, this would have been taken out as well, right? And this would have been the support area to push price up to give you that pullback anyways, right? Now, this is just ideas that are just coming off the top of my head, um, because this is actually what happens in the market as well. Um, so this would have been your fresh breaker structure, uh, which nicely explained. Yep. Um, so this would have been your breaker structure. Now, if since that's your breaker structure, guess what? You're going to get in involved on the trade on the pullback, lows at the, um, stop loss at the highs, and maybe you're targeting those lows, or maybe you want to target a one to two, or maybe you even want to target next zone below. Because you remember, there's two zones that I drew, maybe you want to target that. And then maybe you want to be like CC and try and get a one to a one to uh, a one to one sorry a one to ninety nine uh, risk reward ratio, right? So you could do something like that. That's what you could do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what you could do if you if you wanted to trade this pair right now. I wouldn't suggest trying to trade it on a higher time frame because there's nothing you can see. But on a smaller time frame, you might you might get away with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but right now, I wouldn't do anything with this right now. I'll be very honest. Uh, there is some sort of 
it's weird because look, you, you as I said, visualization, like you've got this area here, right? Which is kind of creating like your inverted head and shoulders because you've got your left shoulder, you've got your head or it, your, well, your head, as I said, or your peak. And now you've got your left shoulder or your right shoulder that was just created. But guess what? In order to get that retest, price has to break this area here. And it doesn't look like it's going to do that. How often do you use the smaller time frame? I don't use the smaller time frame. I've just learned so many different strategies over the years that I know I'm talking about. What was I just going to do? Intraday. Now, intraday is a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult, right? I'll be very real. Like, same way I just marked out the daily swings. You can kind of, you can kind of do it the same way. Um, but it's going to be a bit more tricky because, like, those areas can really get disrespected real quick. So I would still do it the same way so that you're on the right side of the market. So in, in the sense of using two time frames above to identify, um, you know, whether you're bullish or bearish. But at the same time, remember, you can only take these setups at a certain time. So if we're talking like, so it'll be 9 a.m. my time to about 4 p.m. my time. So if you're on the East Coast, EST, that should be about, you guys are five hours behind me. So that will be about. He enters the trades between 5 and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There you go. Thank you, CC, for converting it. So yeah, around those times, right? So you can actually, enter, depending on how you're trading, again, you can actually enter outside of those hours because those are the times that that pair specifically moves. But if we're talking, uh, you know, major pairs or even indices that are correlated with that specific session so if we're talking uk 100 for example obviously that's london session right although you can still trade it during new york session because you remember you still have the crossover um and then you also have some 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 companies in the uk that are also related to the, to the us and then you also have s p 500 nas 100 which are all like us companies of course then so that you will trade those during new york session things like that but when it comes to nzd jpy for example both of those are actually in the Asian Asian session, right? So you can actually trade those outside of the time for um, the time zone that I just stated or CC just stated, which is between five a.m. and nine a.m. You just need to be very careful with which ones you're picking. Of course, you can trade NZD JPY during those time zones that we just mentioned, right? But again, it's all down to probability and um, what you see at that very moment. So just be very careful with what you're doing. Um, let me see. So you've got, let me see if I can find one and I'll show you. Uh, so this would have been one, but of course you would have got stopped out again, as much as I like to use my fractals, there's times where the fractals won't show up. So it's down to myself to identify that area. Right now, I already know we had price pushing up over here. Price came down. This would have been a low price broke above came back down this would have been a low as well so i could act, i could actually mark up this entire area here or i could just mark up this tiny area here you've i've got two areas to react from and i'm not just picking one area right so that would have been one zone and that would have been one zone but as i can see it's literally the same area because this it both overlaps it hasn't broken above this first one and it hasn't broken above this uh the, the second one that I just drew as well so we're golden that's one hour. Again, what you could do is go to the four hour time frame, two time frames above. Above the one hour is a four hour, above that is a daily, right? So same way that I will do it on a on a um on a daily setup is the same sort of way that I will do it on a what do you call it? Um on a on an intraday. Now Brian doesn't do this, I'll be very real with you. He doesn't, because obviously he's entering from specific times. So there's no need to do this. But as I said, if you want to, you could give yourself further confluences to do it this way, right? So we have a resistance area over here. There's no need to look further back. It's pointless because you remember on the time, frame, the time frame you're on. Plus, there's no immediate at price action around this level that you just marked up, right? And I'll come back to this and then for uh, three or one, I'll let you know. I've done. I already know how the four hour entries. Are. Um, yeah, I already know how they are. 
I, I was, yeah. Brian's way of doing this is the one hour. I started doing the four hour, and I, and since then, everyone has has been mentioning it. Brian again, Brian. If you go but go and ask Brian, Brian doesn't do the four hour. Brian doesn't suggest it, and Brian doesn't suggest it based on statistics, but it works, right? Um, again, it's all down to because you can do a hundred trades, and your win rate could be. 54%. CC can do the same thing and come back with 67%. Um, you know, anyone else in here could do it and come back with a lower percentage than, than what I've just I just mentioned. It's literally all down to how you see the market. But especially when it comes down to the lower time frames, people do tend to uh, you know, I'm not trying to bash anyone in here, don't get it twisted, but um, you know, when it comes down to the lower time frame. It's very hard to identify. So don't so don't get it twisted. Um thank you for the MC entries. Yeah. Like it's very hard to identify it. Um but for sure, like go ahead, do 100 trades. Um and and see how you know see what the percentage win rate is for you. If you don't, if you don't, I'm, I'm sure you can use um what's this thing called? Uh what's it? FX replay? If you if you go and use FX replay. And 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 um do your back testing. It will literally give you end results, and it will show your your percentage win rate and your actual ret your um your return gains on how much you've actually obviously won back. Um, and that will be a good indicator. And obviously, on top of that, you can see for yourself like how you analyze the market. You know what I'm saying? Because some people some people might be better an at analyzing than you, and they would have entered more positions out of the hundred than that you've got. But as long as you know what you're doing. There ain't nothing. There ain't nothing stopping you. Um, so yeah, that that was a full hour. I mean, on top of that, you got the daily, right? Follow your lead on this, bro. Yeah. So on top of that, you got the um, daily time frame, right? Now, there's no again, there's no immediate price action that we can. Well, I say price action, but there's no yeah, there's no immediate price action, and there's no immediate fractal. The only fractal that uh obviously I can see is down here, and price where, where we're entering from is all the way down here. Uh, with, with these two blue zones um, and obviously we've got this area here which hasn't been marked up so we can mark this one up um, if we wanted to right now obviously because we're on trade review obviously we know where price is going to go because it just showed us just now but when we go back down to the one hour time frame right where's our TP if we were to draw our if we were to draw our fib our TP is literally in that area now as I said we can buy and sell into a support and resistance zone but when we're in it you've got to be careful with what you're doing so in this case, because we can't actually buy into that area. So we've got our setup, we've had our uh, breaker structure and our retracements, um, you know, all of those confluences drop down to the 15 minute time frame, right? And what time would this be? Yeah, let me check what time that would be in the first place. So this is London session, right? And this is literally New York session now. Well, one hour before New York session. So again, it's actually the same time that Brian has just stated basically, or even CC just stated 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Same time. Right? Boom. How do you customize your charts to make it on title date? Pair uh, tough one. You gotta pay me for that information, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the uh so we've got the break of the 61.8. Um, and then obviously look now we've got our we've got tagged in just there. And then now we're breaking. Okay, so nearly we broke even. So we got that's the second entry now for anyone that missed the first one. Now we've broken even because we've got to close below the sixty one point eight, right? Um, and then on top of that, look at what price did. Price went straight to TP. Boom. So that's how you can do it with the intraday. Right. So if you are going to do the intraday, what I would suggest is stick to the time frames, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. EST, or um, what that would be, that would be for us in the UK, that would be 9 a.m. to whatever it is, man. I'm not going to do the maths. It would be 9 a.m. to just after New York session, right? And still do the top-down analysis that I just told you. Wait for the setup to appear. I missed it, bro. How was the entry? What do you mean?
Bro, the entry's here, bro. It's the same as the swing setups. It's literally the same. But I just showed you, like, directional bias, top-down analysis, right? So you've got your break over here. You've got your impulse. You've got your correction. Structure break of the 60. Structure break or 61 break. 61 break is the structure break, bro. We're not, we don't do, you don't do structure. Okay, so, so I tell you, like, there's two ways to do this, right? Because you can see where price came back to this area here. You always wait for the break of the 61. Always wait for the break of the 61. That is your entry. That's your, um, your, your, what's it called? Your entry signal. For your entry, especially on a smaller time frame like this, is going to be a bit more, um, it's going to be a bit more different, right? Because here you've got structure just before we broke 61.8. But the, we broke the 61.8. So your entry could have been at the 61.8 as normal, as the swing setups, right? And your stop loss would have been down here, no problem. But as you can see, what did price do? Broke the 61.8 and actually came back down to this structure area here. So you could have had your 60, entry at the 61.8 or in line with the structure area over here. That would have been your entry. Your stop loss would have been at this area here. If you entered at structure and you would have targeted that, uh, you know, this area here, right? The negative 27. That still would have given you a one to three, as you can see. Obviously, I know it's a bit odd because obviously I haven't lined it up properly. But it still would have given you a one to three. If your entry was at a 61.8, your stop loss just above the 88, your entry at the, 60, um, at the negative 27, you still would have got your one to three, right? But as you can see, you have two entry types. It's up to you how you want to take it. Of course, if you do the 61.8, price might come to your stop loss. Like that. Come on. You acting up now, boy. Price might come to your stop loss like that, right? Stop you out and then go in your direction. But if you had entered at the structure, remember your stop loss would have been at 100% fib, right? Now you still got this breathing room in between so that even if you wasn't drawdown, guess what? You still hit TP anyways. So there's two. When it comes to the um, intraday, you have literally two types of entries that you can do to prevent yourself from getting stopped out because there's going to be serious wicks, especially on the smaller time frame, where price will try and stop you out and then go in your favor. That is how you do it. Uh, that's how I do it. You structure around the room. Yeah, but you don't have to. But of course you can if you want to because remember, there's nothing stopping price from literally tagging the 61.8, not coming to structure, and then taking off. It's all down to how you want to, uh, what do you call it? How it, was, it all comes down to how you want to risk the trade, bro. Uh, if I'm sure one of the four hour setup as well, but it's the same thing on a four hour setup, it's literally the same thing again. It's all down to probabilities. Four hours, you wait for it, you can wait for it with the four hours. Technically, you don't actually have to wait around the same time. Um, let's see, because you can use the four hour time frame, yeah. One is just more aggressive entry. Exactly, Lydia. Um, yeah, for our time frame, you actually don't have to wait around the same time. I'll be very honest, due to the fact that the four hour can also be used as a swing setup or like a mini swing setup. So you don't actually have to wait for it. Uh, and I say mini swing setup, not just for EMC, which was talking about any other strategy as well. See, this is the thing about the four hours. It's a bit difficult to catch one, but when you do catch one. Okay. I think I caught one. Yeah, I caught one. Okay, I know we got we broke above the area there, right? Let's see. Yeah, we broke above the area there. But at the same time, hold on. Let me see something. Okay, this is where your discretion plays a part, right? What color is this candle? Let's see. It's still on the goddamn floor. It's still on the floor. No, I said they're still on there. I'm just... Sorry, guys. All right, this is where your discretion plays a part, right? Because technically, we can't actually see this candle. This candle here is actually a doji, right? 
can't see if it's blue and I can't see if it's black. Even if I decide to change the colors of my, my charts, you can't see it. But your discretion plays a part here, right? Because again, some people will draw their zones a bit different to how I would draw mine. Me personally, I would have said, said this is um, similar to that EuroCAD setup that I showed you, right? Where price broke below, fell to hold, and then... Um, so it failed to hold during the retracement and it broke above. And then now we're looking for an EMC in the opposite direction, right? But because obviously I can't identify this cut this candle here, which obviously is a doji, I'm not going to take that setup because I can't force a setup. So in this case, what you would do is you would go with your original bias, which is the bearish bias, right? Now, this is where using the two time frames above also. helps you identify where price is going at with eurocad the only difference is with this um sorry with eurocad the only difference was when price flipped so it gave us a second emc instead of and we used the second one instead of the first one the higher time frame actually was in line with the second setup and it was no longer bearish it was bullish that's what helped us take that trade in this case because of what's happening similar scenario but guess what Although it's done this area, this um, break above um, in opposite direction now. So we would be looking at it to be bullish, right? But guess what? Higher time frame is actually still bearish. So you wouldn't be taking that as a bullish setup. Otherwise, you get trapped. This is where your discretion comes into place, right? So in this case, as I said, although it had broken, I'm still going to hold it, right? Uh, what I'll do is I'll do this. So we've got that set up. We've got two retracement candles. No, well, we've got three now or four. No problem. Uh, we know where price is going because obviously we're on trading view. So that's cool. But then you would have done this, right? Now, if you would have done that, you would have said, okay, that's a weekly support area, which we had broken anyways the previous week. And then you go, sorry, that was the daily. And then we go down to the weekly. Um, now with the weekly being there, what you would have done is you would have marked out this zone down here. But guess what? That's where your TP is going to be anyways. So you don't need to worry about that. Now, what you would have done is, okay, so you would have had something like this, right? Let me go back down to the full hour. You would have had something like this, right? So what you would have done is, hold on. Oh, well, here, sorry. So you would have had something like this, right? So you would have been careful. Because technically, although... Remember, you're on, a, you're on a four hour time frame. This down here would have been your weekly. So you can actually go further down into your weekly. Technically, we're not too far away from the daily uh, support area, which is actually, no, that's a four hour support. Daily support is this one here. So technically, we're not too far away from the weekly one. Um, so what you would have done is you would have done something like that. Now, it's getting too messy, so I'm going to take that off. But I know that we're still bullish. Uh, sorry, we're still bearish. And what I want to do is take that trade into that weekly uh, resistance area, which is below, which is fine. As I said, you can sell into it. But whilst you're in it, you can't, you know, it's very difficult to, to keep selling into it. So in this case, because we're just fresh into that area, what we're going to do is we go down to the one hour time frame. All right, one hour time frame, no problem. Wait for that break of the 61.8. We don't have it yet. That's our break. Okay, now we wouldn't have got a tagged in because obviously it broke the 38.2. But the whole point of this is, okay, so now, right, you can actually adjust yourself because technically we're still here. Let's see what happens. And when I said adjust yourself because technically we're still here, basically because price didn't actually break the fib, it just wicked it. You may be able to adjust the fib to see if you can get another break. You've got another break. got another retest at 61.8 and this is why i say when you have two different um entry types price can hit the 61.8 and not come back to structure and take off without you so you you know you've got to be careful with uh, certain setups that you're taking um and just pay attention like not not always is it going to come back to structure um so obviously we would have moved your stop loss to break even now so our entry would have been at this level here boom boom bow That one to three. Stop loss that break even because we're past the 38.2. Boom. Simple. Same scenario.
Did I answer your question? I hope I answered your question because you asked me. It's good to have you back. What do you mean good to have you back? Where did I go? <laughs> right, I'm here, man. But yeah, literally, it's, it's as simple as that. Like, it's not hard. Once you know what zones you are targeting, I think that's where that's where people make make the mistake. Where's your TP? That's the that's the main part. Like, you're targeting your TP, but you don't even know where your TP is. Is your TP past an area of resistance or support that you're trying to you know sell or buy into? If it is, bro, you're doing something wrong. Don't take that trade. Or take a different setup. You know what I'm saying? Like, buy or sell into it, not whilst you're in it. If you're fresh in it, right? Like, Euro CHF, for example, um, where I had this resistance zone here, if you're fresh in it, which technically it kind of was, right? Because technically, you will take the high. Obviously, given the fact that I cover these, these areas, but you will take that high as it. This is being fresh in it. So after the rejection pushed down here, this here, which now gave us our um, correction, this would be fresh in it. So you can actually buy into it because your TP would also be in that area. But be careful because as soon as, again, price not, might, might not hit your TP, but if it does hit your TP, you're good. You're out of the trade before price even does that. Like it's not rocket science. They're all the same thing. Just intraday is a bit more quicker and... Harder to grasp, right? You're gonna get those crazy wicks. You get stopped out. You're probably thinking, "Shit, do I get back in again or not?" Yeah, get back in. Get back in now. The only reason why I'm saying get back in is because you remember, if you got the correct zones in the correct places, then, um, yeah, if you got the correct zones in the correct places, like you can, you can, you can know like if price is gonna hold that area or not. Price wants to disrespect an area. It's only going to do that because of news. Let's be real now. Right? You're not just going to get some crazy movement for no reason. Especially on those time frames. Simple as that. So that's it for today, actually. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Hit that bell notification as well. Catch you guys next week. Peace.